Dame Elizabeth Taylor never considered herself a great actress, but she knew she was a great movie star. Often described as the ultimate celebrity, her decadence and love of diamonds, along with her many marriages and divorces, captivated the world for more than 50 years. She was born in London, but her family moved to America when she was seven. Two years later, her stunning looks and violet eyes had won her a film contract. By the age of 12, she was a household name, starring in National Velvet. Anybody ever sells a pie? I might as well die. More films followed in the early 50s, but it wasn't until she appeared with Paul Newman in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof that she won critical acclaim. But I can't live on this way. Now you agreed to accept that condition. I know I did, but I can't, I can't. By now, she'd embarked on the lifestyle that would overshadow her acting talents. At the age of 18, following two broken engagements, she married hotelier Conrad Hilton Jr. This lasted less than a year. He was swiftly followed by actor Michael Wilding. That lasted five years and gave her two children. Husband number three was film producer Mike Todd, with whom she had a daughter. Todd was killed in a plane crash, leaving her a widow at the age of just 26. Public sympathy waned when, just a year later, she ran off with Eddie Fisher, husband of her best friend Debbie Reynolds. From then on, her public and private life became totally entwined. Aww. In 1960, Taylor became the first actress to sign a million-dollar contract to star as the Queen of the Nile in the epic Cleopatra. But the drama in front of the cameras was nothing compared to the action behind the scenes. She'd found husband number five and six, Richard Everything Burton. Fair. What I feel, I should have felt long ago, when I was very young. But I could say to myself that this was how love was and how it would be. The following 15 years were stormy and hectic. Drama, drinking, spectacular rows and even more spectacular diamonds. They married, divorced, then married again and appeared together in ten films, one of which won Taylor her second Oscar. And Daddy thought it was a good idea too, for a while, until he started watching for a couple of years, getting angrier, until he watched... It was for her performance as the drunken and embittered wife in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. It seemed like a classic case of art imitating life. Stop it, Martha. Taylor and Burton divorced for the second and final time in 1976. By then, the ravages of her extravagant lifestyle were beginning to show. She was dogged by ill health, chronic back pain and weight problems. This led to a constant battle with drugs and alcohol, though she still managed to fit in her seventh marriage and divorce to US Senator Jack Warner. The death in 1985 of her friend, the actor Rock Hudson from AIDS, brought her a new and unexpected role. Little was known or understood about the disease, but Taylor's efforts to fundraise and heighten awareness helped make AIDS charities both fashionable and lucrative. As her own health deteriorated, she grew dangerously reliant on a cocktail of drink and drugs. Faced with the stark choice of death or detox, she entered the Betty Ford Clinic, where against all advice, she embarked on a relationship with fellow addict Larry Fatensky. Her heart ruled her head and she made him husband number eight, vowing this time would be for keeps. After four years, he went the way of all the others with a reputed $5 million payoff. Asked if she'd ever remarry, her answer was unequivocal. <laughs> No way am I, <laughs> am I ever getting married again. Ever, never, ever again. Dame Elizabeth Taylor for services to acting and to charity. In 2000, Elizabeth Taylor was made a Dame of the British Empire. She said it was one of the crowning achievements of her career. I feel wonderful. And world watch out. Elizabeth Taylor continued to be plagued by ill health, including a brain tumour. Her public appearances were almost exclusively linked to AIDS fundraising, and she was frequently accompanied by Michael Jackson, whom she described as the least weird man she knew. When Jackson was buried in September 2009, she attended the service in a wheelchair. She'd previously shunned a public memorial for the singer, saying she didn't want to be part of the circus surrounding his death. 
A month later, the star underwent heart surgery to repair a valve. She tweeted afterwards saying, it's like having a brand new ticker. It was her ongoing congestive heart problem that saw her admitted back into hospital most recently. She may be the face to the end, Elizabeth Taylor retained the magic and the glamour that made her one of the brightest of Hollywood stars. Maybe my treasure or the price I have to pay. She may be the song that's so sad.